Hello and welcome back to Pokemon Week here on Youngster Jordan's YouTube channel. That's me, Youngster Jordan. We are going to be doing a tier listing of the games. Now, some of these are fan games on here. We're going to skip those um, because I haven't played those. But we, you know, have done two Sporkle quizzes. Can I name them all of Pokemon Gen 7 in a couple of minutes? Can I name them all of Gen 8 in whatever number of minutes? You can watch those videos right now on youtube and now we have uh, a tier listing of the starter pokemon through gen 8 and we're about to do this now which is a tier listing of all of these games so i hope that uh, everybody's ready for more of this let me zoom in a bit more so people can read it that's better okay <laughs> so we got s tier we got a tier b tier c tier D tier, S tier being the best, D tier being the worst. <sighs> so, I guess let me kind of explain how I'm going to be ranking these, I guess. I'm going to be trying to rank these in the game itself. Not like the region, not the, uh, not the Pokemon in the region. My main focus is going to be on how does it play. If I was to go play this game now, not any nostalgic ties to it. That's what I'm going to try to do. If I go back and play this game now, you know, what? what's the experience like? So something like Red and Blue, which are huge games that I would probably rank highly nostalgically, are probably going to be lower because I'm ranking these, like I said, as if I had to go and play them right now. And I have played these recently on the 3DS on the Nintendo eShop, and the quality of life changes that have happened since 1995 for these games is huge. So these games are going to be a little lower. And you might see stuff that is more recent higher uh, because of things like quality of life changes, just my general enjoyment levels. I'm sure people are going to disagree with a lot of the stuff that I choose to rank in certain tiers. Uh, but if I put them all at S, then it's no fun right <laughs> so uh let's go ahead and get underway i don't know how to start here i guess let's go by release date which would be red and blue i am going to currently put them c tier we'll see if i move them around as we go but uh c tier is where we're gonna go first with these and again no nostalgic rankings just straight up how does it play nowadays if i was to play it so that'd be something like, where is uh, gold and silver? They're probably going to be around uh, C as well. Okay. Fire red and leaf green. I'm going to put more at like an A tier. All right. Because I think if you go back and play those games right now, it's still a good time. I love going back and playing these Game Boy Advance games like Fire Red and Leaf Green, like Ruby and Sapphire. That's where I like to do that. Uh, the Pikachu edition, I forgot to put that. I'm going to put that in C tier uh, as well to be consistent. And Crystal is probably going to end up in B tier just for some of the changes that happened. The first time they added uh, where you could choose if you're a boy or a girl. I think it's the first one that really had color um, that was deeper than the rest of the games. It was exclusive to the Game Boy Color. So I'm going to put Crystal at B. I guess it wasn't exclusive to the color. But you know what I'm saying. Like It had the Game Boy Color word written on top of it and the... All that. Emerald. Emerald, I'm putting S tier. Emerald is one of the best Pokemon games of all time. Not just nostalgically for me, but the fact it had the Battle Frontier, uh, how much it enhanced Ruby and Sapphire, Fire Red and Leaf Green. It is just a game that I can revisit at any time. Really enjoy playing Emerald a lot. So let's go Diamond and Pearl. Diamond and Pearl, I'm going to have to put D tier. And. That is not anything against Gen 4. That is more for the case of, again, if I had to go back and play right now, it is so slow. It is really, really slow. And a huge improvement was Platinum when Platinum came out. And I'm going to put Platinum at a B tier. This game was really good. Platinum is great. So we're going to put Platinum at B tier. So that leaves Heart Gold and Soul Silver for the, uh, for that Gen, Gen Four, and we're gonna put Heart Gold and Soul Silver at that. Uh, I'm gonna put them in A tier. Really fun games. 
I know for some people these are the best games ever, but again, I'm very partial to Emerald, so I'm going to put Heart Gold just a step below. Just a step below Emerald. And, and these are subject to change. Okay, so that takes us to the end of the DS with Black and White and Black 2, White 2. Black and White, I think I'm going to put probably B tier. All right, but I'm going to put Black and White 2 in A tier. I think there was some cool en enhancements in Black 2, White 2, and uh, I'm just going to move that to the A tier. I do like Gen 5, but it was also the one that took me the longest to really get through, um, just to certain circumstances in my life. And again, I'm not trying to base it on that. If I was to go back and play Black 2, White 2 right now, I think I'd probably end up putting it in the A tier. All right, where did that where does that lead us? X and Y, right? X and Y, I'm going to put in B tier as well. X and Y is really cool. 3D graphics, it's really easy to go back and play and enjoy yourself, but I think the story's a little unfinished uh and they never got a third version or even like a version like Black 2 White 2 or Ultra Sun Ultra Moon. So, I'm going to go ahead and leave X and Y at B tier. Uh it was a great leap from the DS to the 3DS, but I think another game in the 3DS is going to really take it to the next level, and that is uh, Sun and Moon. But before we get there, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, I'm going to put in A tier along with Ruby and Sapphire, the original version. There are some differences that probably make Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire less... You know, like, it was fun to replay it. It was fun to have a remake. But there are some things missing. The fact that it wasn't just a remake of Emerald with the fr Frontier and all that kind of stuff leaves it at an A for me. <laughs> I'm just thinking like, oh my god, I'm not able to put anything in S tier other than Emerald right now. Sun and Moon. I'm going to put A tier here as well. I really dug Sun and Moon for the story. I think some of the changes they've made. You know, the Pokepelago was really fun. Uh, it's a really easy game to go back to and play and dive in. And again, that's how I'm kind of basing this list of if I was to turn on my 3DS right now and play Sun and Moon, would I get annoyed? No, I think it's at a good spot where it is, you know, really easy to use, really easy to play. This might probably... I don't know, upset some people. I'm going to go ahead and put Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon in S tier. I really dug Gen 7 a lot. Not just for the Pokemon designs, which I'm not including in this tier ranking, but I thought it was a lot of fun to play. It changed a lot thematically. If, if we're, you know, Some of the stuff that changed in Sun and Moon is also present in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Those being something like the, uh, you know, the ride system for the Pokemon changing it from gyms to uh, the um, trials just to kind of freshen something up. That was something that I really enjoyed about Sun and Moon. But Ultra Sun and Moon just improved on everything in Sun and Moon except for maybe the story. But adding new Pokemon, adding new Ultra Beasts, that was something that I really dug. And this was the first time that we really had something that was like a third version but two of them black two white two was sort of that way but it was a whole different story this was kind of the same story with a little bit of a twist on it that made it a little different but add it new forms add it new pokemon and uh add it the cool ultra wormhole uh, traveling thing to get shinies and stuff like that was a lot of fun so i'm gonna go ahead and put that as s tier all right, so that moves us to Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee. I'm going to put this, like, firmly in maybe, like, B. All right? It's super easy to go back to. I can have a ball playing Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, go back. It's not an old game. But I'd say the one thing that kind of lowers it is the catch system, no wild battles. It was fun for a little taste of something different. But going back to it now... At times when I think about it, I'm like, I have to be in the mood for that. I have to be in the mood for the wrist throw to, you know, uh, you know, to have a whole different style of play of Pokemon. I have to be in the mood for it. The animation and, like, the artwork is super cute, super cool in Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee. But for me, 
at times it's like, okay, I need to like think of uh, <laughs> I have to be really in the mood to know I'm about to turn on Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee. Love the following Pokemon all the time as well. That was something I really liked. And being able to like ride Charizard, ride Dragonite in the sky, those type of things put it super good. I might even move it to A at some point. Radical Red is definitely a fan game. XD and Coliseum. I never had GameCube, so I never got to play those except for at friends' houses. And I don't think I have enough to base that on at all. So I'm not going to do it. Sword and Shield. This is S tier for me. Again, they, they made mints able to change natures easier. Really, the entryway to competitive battling was super easier thanks to Sword and Shield. Um, I, I, It's the easiest one for me to go back to, and I've even gone back to it recently, even after games like Arceus and Diamond and Pearl, to go back and do Dynamax Adventures. Being able to play online and do raids, something that was introduced in Sword and Shield is something that makes it S tier. Being able to play with friends and tackle Pokemon together, I think is something that is really underestimated. Um, or I guess kind of at this point, three years into Sword and Shield, maybe taken for granted. And I'm happy to be able to do that. And uh, I, I liked the story as well. I know some people really don't like Sword and Shield for me. It's one of the best Pokemon games up there for me. And again, just quality of life features that help. Um, stuff like that. Arceus. Arceus is also S tier for me. Being able to have this whole different story-based game. Limited co-op. So this is the difference between Sword and Shield and Arceus. It's like almost drastically different. But being able to have like this whole five areas be like your whole wild areas. You're able to hide in the grass, roll around, chuck Pokeballs, hit them from behind. Um, the fact that they actually added new Pokemon in this game too was something that was, I guess, really awesome for me. And again, I'm not basing it off designs of Pokemon. Just the fact that they added more Pokemon to Gen 8 through Legends Arceus is something that was really cool. And I know I just realized this skip brilliant diamond shining pearl and unfortunately that has to go in d tier as well while the art style of diamond and pearl shining pearl brilliant diamond are is beautiful i love the art style it's really cute and this isn't like the main issue is that the game's a little broken right my player gets stuck on walls easier the movement isn't really great there's a lot of issues with I guess bugs more so in, in that game than anything. It's very clunky movement. Um, it's tough to go back to and play sometimes. It really is. Um, and it's brand new. It's it's a year old, not even. And it's really tough to get through at times. I finished my Brilliant Diamond playthrough offline. I have not finished my Nuzlocke of it just because it is such a drag to get through at times. And I haven't even touched Shining Pearl from my double pack at this point. I know I will at, at some point. But it is just something I kind of dread getting back around to. And I, I, again, I don't hate any of these games. I can play any of these games. It's just when I, you know, D tier is just like, I think it's funny seeing the Diamond and Pearl and Shining Pearl Brilliant Diamond next to each other. And again, it's not an indictment on Gen 4 or anything. I actually really like their starters, if you go back and watch my starter S-tier uh, ranking. But it's the gameplay style. And the fact that it wasn't a Platinum remake where they just call it Diamond and Pearl and just have the Platinum features. having It was made by a whole different company, right? It was made by Ilka instead of Game Freak. And... It just was a little broken. It took them forever to get Pokemon Home compatibility. Stuff like that that really soured me on the experience of Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. So there you go. This is my rankings here of <laughs> the games. I hope people don't give me too much of a hard time. But those those S-tier ones are the ones I revisit all the time. The A-tier ones are ones I really had a blast with. B... I had a great time as well, but don't revisit that often. See, when I was a kid, I loved the hell out of those games, but if you go back now, I can kind of suffer through it at times, but 
I, I've done a replay of red. I've done replays of yellow and gold and silver. But it's when you're so used to being able to like nowadays like change their nicknames whenever and uh you know for a while their tms were not single use so you were able to in that game they were and you had to kind of readjust uh you know just stuff that you're used to like not being able to really see their sprites that well when you on the pause menu right Stuff like that that kind of drags it down as of today. As a kid, they were the best games ever. And if I was ranking them on, like, my nostalgia, red and blue and yellow are probably S tier. But I'm not. And then D tier is I still had fun with them, but there's a lot that needed to be worked on to fix those games. And at times, I just don't go back and play them that much. So I hope everyone understands why I ranked them the way I do. But yeah, that is about the end of <laughs> this ranking. Thank you for continuing to watch Pokemon Week. This is new videos of Pokemon content every single day, building to Friday's release of uh, Scarlet and Violet. Uh, one of the first videos I'm going to make on Scarlet and Violet for the YouTube is how the breeding system works because it's a complete change uh, compared to Sword and Shield, and it's going to take some getting used to. So there's going to be a video based on that. I don't know how soon I'll get that out that opening weekend, but I, I do hope I get it out release weekend. And then we'll also have some playthroughs that I'm doing on Twitch that I'll probably chop up into videos for YouTube as well. Um, so, you know, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know your thoughts on this uh, and where you would rank some of these games. And thanks for watching.